Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet Holy Spirit, there is nobody, there's nobody like you. There is nobody like you. There is nobody like you. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet Holy Spirit, there's nobody there's nobody, there's nobody like you. There is nobody, there's nobody like you. There is nobody, there's nobody like you. Sweet Holy Spirit, Sweet Holy Spirit, there's nobody, there's nobody like you. I was walking around my property one day at my house and my hands were uplifted. By the way, you don't have to lift your hands, but there is an emotional change that happens during your prayer time. The moment you lift your hands, my father could hold his hands up for an hour. Shocking. I, I never did that. But you would be astounded if you lift your hands, even as you walk around a room at your house and you're singing. I love sitting at your feet. I love sitting at your feet. I love hearing what you say. I love knowing all your desires. I'm so pleasure to obey. Your favor's like a sunrise driving all my nights away. I love sitting at your feet, Holy Spirit. I love sitting at your feet, Holy Spirit, every single day. I love sitting at your feet every single day. And I had my hands uplifted and I was walking. And suddenly these words came out of my spirit. You will be happy at my house. I promise you will smile most every day. You will be happy at my house. I promise things will always go your way. I promise, Holy Spirit, things will always go your way. I promise, Holy Spirit, things will always go your way. Ten very simple things that make a profound difference in your life, in relationships, in the flow of favor, in the acceleration of prosperity. Ten simple things. It sounds simple, but the $300,000 car doesn't go anywhere without a key. If we arrive from another planet and someone says, this car goes this fast and this car can do this. And, wow, wow. How can we do it? This is the key. What? What? This is... The that's all it takes for this big, yeah, but it doesn't go anywhere without this little key. Most of the time in life, 
you and I have not been taught the simple things, the small things. Number one, the Lord's Prayer, Matthew 6. Matthew 6. Jesus said this, that these are the words our Father wants to hear you say. Do you have any idea how magical that is? How profound it is that Jesus the Christ Nobody understands the Godhead, so don't worry about being, say, I don't understand God. Who does? He's never been seen. Never been seen. But Jesus said this is a prayer he would like for you to say. How old was I before I caught on? I was in my 70s. Sure, I knew the Lord's Prayer. Sure, I could say it. But I wasn't intrigued by the Lord's Prayer. I didn't even necessarily like it. Now, about 20 years ago, 18 years ago, I got involved with a prayer ministry that divided the Lord's Prayer into six parts. And it was very powerful. And I was very fascinated for about six months until the leader of that prayer ministry uh, disappointed me, and I got out of it. The former president of Oral Roberts University wrote a book, something like this, 22 minutes, no, 22 seconds or something like that that could change your world. And inside, he began to talk about the Lord's Prayer. Family, it has power. There are several things happen. I say the Lord's Prayer first thing every morning. I say it throughout the day. I've said the Lord's Prayer as many as five or six, seven times in a day. Why? Jesus commanded it. Jesus instructed it. Jesus revealed it. Jesus confirmed that the Lord's Prayer instantly is obedience. Can you imagine the favor from God from each instruction that you follow has a different river of favor. You don't have to obey 77 instructions to get God's attention one gets his attention. One. One. Our Father that establishes relationship. It establishes submission. That one phrase alone establishes authority. And your permission, you have authorized God to oversee your life. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread that's a request. You just obeyed Matthew 7, 7 to ask, seek, knock. The moment you say the Lord's Prayer, you have set supernatural laws in motion. Why didn't I catch on to this? I don't know. Oh, I said it a few times, but I, it was not habitual, routine. It was not established as the foundation of my life. Till now, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
you've thrust up praise into the heavens. Our Father, that's submission. That's authorization to be guided, protected. If any of us knew the power of a sentence, we would talk it. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Do you have any idea what you've just said? Do you have any concept that you have yielded all of your authority to the heart of God? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day give. One scripture says, you have not because you've asked not. Give us this day our daily bread. You haven't over asked. You haven't overreached. And you haven't been arrogant to live without God. You've asked him, give us this day our daily bread. You haven't asked him too much. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, our sin, our trespass. You've instantly showed humility. You've instantly destroyed all the accusations from Satan that you're arrogant. The Lord's Prayer covers it. It introduces you instantly to instant favor with God. No, no demonic accusation can work against you once you've prayed the Lord's Prayer that morning. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. You've just told God, I let go of every dishonor, every attack on me. As I forgive my debtors, I welcome your mercy today. Lead us not into temptation. Temptation means presentation of evil. Doesn't mean that you feel suckered and you feel a great desire. If somebody said you want some cocaine, that's a temptation. Doesn't mean I wanted it or I'm sick, weak to it. It just meant it was presented to me. Lead us not into temptation means don't let any presentation of evil be presented to us today. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil people. Deliver us from evil presentations. For thine is the kingdom. It's all yours. You're the master. I'm your child. I submit it. I would imagine nine out of ten of us did not pray the Lord's Prayer this morning. But Jesus told us to do that. The moment you've done that, You've done so many things right. You have opened up so many doors. You've confirmed his authority. You've confirmed your submission. You have set angels in motion to guard you. It's a very simple prayer. Matthew 6. Matthew 6, Matthew 6. Number two. It's very simple, but he said, come into his presence singing. So when you get up, 
You're sitting in your recliner or you're kneeling, however you pray. I love you. I love you, Holy Spirit. I love you. I love you, Holy Spirit. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your love. I love you. I love you, Holy Spirit. I want to teach you that right now. The protocol of the Holy Spirit is he wants to hear a song when you want to enter his presence. That's a command. That's an instruction. It's a golden secret of attracting Instant change in the environment. I love you. I love you, Holy Spirit. I love you. I love you, Holy Spirit. I'm thankful for your love, for your mercy and your grace. I'm thankful. I'm thankful, Holy Spirit. I love you, I love you, Holy Spirit. I love you, I love you, Holy Spirit. I'm so thankful for your mercy, your love, and your grace. I'm thankful, I'm thankful, Holy Spirit. Let's learn it. You don't need a piano. I love you. I love you, Holy Spirit. I love you. I love you, Holy Spirit. I'm so thankful for your mercy, your love, and your grace. You can change any word you want to. I'm so thankful for your mercy, your love, and your peace. I'm thankful. I'm thankful, Holy Spirit. I thank you. I love you. I love you, Holy Spirit. I love you. I love you, Holy Spirit. I'm so thankful for your love, your guidance, and your peace. I'm thankful. I'm thankful, Holy Spirit. I love you. I love you, Holy Spirit. I love you. I love you, Holy Spirit. I'm so thankful for your love, your guidance, your wisdom, and your peace. I'm thankful. I'm thankful, Holy Spirit. Want to try with me? I love you. I love you, Holy Spirit. I love you. I love you, Holy Spirit. I'm so thankful for your love, your wisdom, and your peace. I'm thankful. I'm thankful, Holy Spirit. Are you getting it? I love you. I love you, Holy Spirit. Ready? I love you. I love you, Holy Spirit. I love you. I love you, Holy Spirit. I'm so thankful for your love, your wisdom, and your peace. I love you. I love you, Holy Spirit. That's the second thing. And you've honored him. You obeyed him. You've documented adaptation to his will. You have any idea how powerful that is? Let's try it. And you can make up your own words. You can make up your own words. I love you. I love you, Holy Spirit. I love you. Oh, I love you, Holy Spirit. I'm so thankful for your love, your wisdom, and your peace. 
I like those three words. Love, wisdom, and peace. I thank you, or I love you. I'm thankful, Holy Spirit. That's a very simple thing. Brother Mike, I never knew that. I didn't know you were supposed to sing till July the 13th, 1994. I didn't know that that was a requirement, a divine expectation. I didn't grasp that it was the word. There's a word. Non-negotiable. It was a non-negotiable instruction from God to come into his presence singing. Another place said sing a new song. Let's make up one. I'm so glad I'm yours. Oh, Lord, I'm so glad I'm yours. I love belonging to you. I love belonging to you. I'm so glad I'm yours. I'm so glad I'm yours. I love belonging. I love belonging to you. I'm so glad I'm yours. I'm so glad I'm yours. I love belonging to you. I love belonging to you. I'm so glad I'm yours. I'm so glad I'm yours. Forever and ever, I belong to you. Now you fulfilled another instruction from God where he said to sing a new song. Why do we make pleasing God so difficult? I don't know. Third simple thing is to keep a checklist every day. You can call yours the happy five. Happy five things I want to do. Write them down. Forty-six times the Bible says write down. One place said, write down your vision, the picture you have of the future, write it down. The third simple thing you should do that makes a profound difference is write down, I require from my staff. You can't work for me without writing down the victory five or the happy five every day. You got to do it if you want a paycheck from me. If you can't do that little thing, if you can't write down five things you want me to pay you for, Nah, you don't, you don't belong in my world. You don't belong in my world. Jose, Arabaya, Write it down on a piece of paper. Don't trust your hand. Don't write it on your hand. And don't, you ready for this? Don't trust your mind. Never, never, never trust your mind for memory. Never. But write down. I ask my staff to write down at 5 o'clock every day, which is closing time, and send it to me. I have a circle around me. I want to know the five things that you want me to pay you for. Five problems you're going to solve. Five people you're going to call. Things you're going to buy. Things you're going to complete. Tell me five things. I used to ask for ten. They couldn't perform it. So I went to five. Five things you will do that day. They're not the only things you will do. They're the five most important things you will do. You will do ten or fifteen things. But what are the five most valuable, most valuable things you're going to do? I want that. I want that at five o'clock every day. You'd be shocked at how many people cannot even write down five things. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot that yesterday. Make that number one on your list, on the five. Your happy five, victory five, success five, whatever you want to call it.
You must keep a checklist. It's simple. It's not hard at all, but very few people do it. Next, keep your phone calls to three minutes. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Peter, James, John, keep your phone calls to three minutes. Make it a habit, a rhythm. Time is the most precious currency God gave you when you were born. Time is currency for experiences. Time is the seed for relationship. Time is the seed for knowledge, information. Time is the seed to create a change. Time is a seed where you sow. Your phone is a seed sowing machine. You sow inspiration. You sow questions. You sow encouragement. You sow reminders. Keep your phone calls to three minutes. Don't make them sound rushed. Insert the sound of purpose. Always say your name. Don't expect somebody to try to recognize who you are because they may be in an environment of distractions. They may be in a restaurant. They may be in their bathroom. They may be driving. Hello, Miss Rosa? And she answers, Yes, this is Dr. Murdoch. And I pause so she can mentally adapt and adjust to me. Because her mind may have been on her five children. He's got one little boy, seven. She's got five sons. She may be on the other line with one of them that just had a car accident. Hello, Miss Rosa. Dr. Murdoch. She uses his hello, Dr. Murdoch. Thank you, Rosa, for answering the phone. Rosa, I just had a question. I pause so she can adapt her mind to answer in a question. I make the phone call purposeful. I avoid saying, everything going okay? How's thing going? How? With son number one or son number five? Son number four, son number two. With the ex-husband? What do, don't make life hard for people. But I say, I have a little question. Then I tell her what it's about. It's about our prayer center. How many partners called yesterday from 11 to 7? Do you have that information handy? Uh, Dr. Murdoch, I'm actually driving right now. But I will get that information for you in the next one hour. And I'll send it to you on your Viber. I really, I don't close up. Okay, bye-bye. No, oh, hold on, hold on. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Rosa. That really helps me for some reason. I'm really wanting to see if our partners are understanding the value of a phone call, because it means so much to me. So you're driving, are you? Be safe. Rosa, let me wrap a prayer around you. Father, according to Psalms 91, Rosa is surrounded by angels. According to Psalms 91.11, 91.11, 9111 is the code for angels. Father, fulfill the integrity that you promised in Numbers 2319. Father, that's our code for divine integrity. Psalms or Numbers 2319. 
And Father, whatever struggle she's experiencing, we come into a covenant on Code 828, Romans 828, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God. Love you, Rosa. Look forward to hearing from you. Bye-bye. Do you see a difference in that kind of phone call? You make it meaningful. Make it purposeful. Now, I said all those extra scriptures just to show you ways to pray for somebody as well. Have every instruction repeated back to you. That's a simple thing. Have every instruction repeated back to you. One of my heroes was Oral Roberts. I was more emotionally closer to him than anybody else in my life. Maybe Deborah, my sister. But I really was close to Oral Roberts. We spent hours and hours. Went on vacation to his home with him. I admired him. Wisdom key. Admiration creates proximity. Admiration is the seed for an invitation. Admiration builds credibility when you admire somebody. If you've never been to the Oral Roberts ministry in Tulsa, Oklahoma, it's worth a flight. It's worth you flying and seeing their ministry. It's the most impactful influential ministry possibly on the earth. Possibly. Thousands are in ministry because of Oral Roberts. Thousands of churches have been built because of Oral Roberts. Thousands of healings because of Oral Roberts. And one of his 13 secrets he shared with me was repetition. The law of repetition. He told me more than once the biggest mistake pastors make in their ministry is preaching new sermons every service. He said, Brother Mike, God only gives a man one message with his life, at the most two. He said, I couldn't tell you any preacher on the earth that's been given more than one message by God with exception of a few with two. I believed him. Stay in the theme of your life. Stay in the focus of your life. The temptation to give your opinion on a lot of things is common. Let me tell you something that happened. There's a young man I've known many, many years. He's a doctor. He's got a lot of smarts about medicine, vitamins. So I called him and said, give me some counsel. I believed in him from my head to my toes. Smart. He married a girl I'd known since she was a kid. His father-in-law was one of my best friends in my 20s. And I asked him for advice. A few weeks later on Twitter, he attacked Kim Kardashian, who's famous for her beauty and her body. She's worth... A lot of money. But he attacked her, Kim Kardashian, by this. He says, many of her followers on Twitter are fake addresses. They're not real. They're fake. And he started attacking an actress as if, who cares if her followers are fake addresses or not? How did he find that out? How did he know? He left his focus. He left his focus. He left his focus 
and he went to attacking a pretty lady. I immediately lost all interest in anything he knew about health or vitamins or anything. In fact, I stopped following him. Don't want to see another word he said. He stepped out of his focus. He stepped out of his calling. He stepped out of the theme of his life. I've done that before. I've done that before. I disagreed with Billy Graham when he said he wouldn't get involved in politics, and he never did. He was friends with 12 presidents, and he talked about each of their relationships. But he would not take a side. I'm this, I'm that, I'm this. And I regret doing that. I regret backing certain, I regret some endorsements. I regret my endorsements. Take up for what you believe. It's okay to tell everybody, I hate abortion. I think it's wrong. But the moment you take a side, I'm Democrat, I'm Republican, you choose adversaries. Stay in the center of what God's called you to be. Now, if God's called you to that, that's your calling. It's a small thing. It's a simple thing. But stay focused. Have every instruction you've given somebody to be spoken back to you in repet repet repetition. And I believe Or Robertson and what he said. It's a simple thing, but stay centered. Stay focused. And when you give instructions to somebody, have them repeat the instruction back to you. I would say this, that at least 25% of all your instructions will be changed, ignored, delayed, or misinterpreted or disagreed with. All your instructions. I've had a staff for many, many years. Every instruction I've given, every instruction I've given, with the exception of about 20%, has been ignored, delayed, misunderstood, forgotten. Repeat an instruction. Repeat an instruction. Another simple thing is when you get angry. Get away from everybody. Get away from everybody when you're mad. I got that from Bishop David Oyedipo in Lagos, Nigeria. One o'clock, one thirty in the morning, driving around his great ministry. And I believe he was right. I said, how do you handle when you get mad at somebody? You're never mad at all your staff, just one person that did something wrong. But everybody else has to taste the odor of your anger. A mother can get mad at something her husband said on the phone, turns around to her three children and begins to verbally slap them all over the place. When you're angry, you hurt the wrong people. When you are angry, you hurt the wrong people. And they can't get over it as easily as you. It's a simple thing, but when you get angry, separate. Another simple thing is read three chapters a day in the Bible and five on Sunday. It takes you through the Bible once a year. There's three chapters a day and five on Sunday. Another simple thing is memorize one scripture on one topic. 31 scriptures on one topic. Mind's wisdom. Proverbs 1.5, a wise man will hear. Proverbs 3.13, happy those who find wisdom. Proverbs 4.7, wisdom is the principal thing. Find one topic in the Bible 
that you would like to master. It may be love. It may be faith. But mine's wisdom. Pick a topic to master. Memorize 31 scriptures and say them every day, every morning, through your prayer time. And here's what you do. Father, I praise you for reminding me of Proverbs 4, 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Father, I praise you for Numbers 23, 19. That reassures me of your integrity. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Father, I praise you. And I believe Romans 8, 28. Father, I believe it, that all things are going to work together for my good. Father, I believe Psalms 84, 11, that no good thing will you withhold from me because I'm going to walk uprightly before you. And you turn a scripture into declarations of faith, etc. Develop a simplified thank you system. That's another simple thing. You must, you must, you must develop a thank you system. The immediacy of gratitude becomes very memorable. Very, very memorable. Call if possible. There's people right now I'm behind on calling. My load is much too heavy. But I have someone on my staff to make sure they call if I'm delayed three or four days to call. I don't have as effective a thank you system as I want. I really don't. I really don't. But neither have I ever been taught about one, ever. And all the people I know in 76 years, nobody has set me down and say, let's work with your thank you system. Do you have a gift table? where all your gifts are placed as soon as they arrive? Do you have a gratitude card where you write down their names? Do you have a record of the last gift that person gave you? I will tell you something the Holy Spirit said to me one day in prayer. And I was praying several hours, four hours a day. And he said this to me, and I don't know if I've ever shared it publicly at all, but I feel like I should today to my wisdom 500 because I've asked God for 500, 500 to sit with me at the feet of the Holy Spirit. The Lord spoke to me. A man could make a pretty good living by just being thankful. You want to write that down? And he used the word pretty. I've changed it some because I didn't win my preferred. But a man could make a very good living by just being thankful. You want to write that down? Keep it on a card. A man could make a very good living, a pretty good living, a fair living. A man could actually make a living by just being thankful. Another simple thing is get a receipt and document on the receipt every single thing. Always, 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 always get a receipt for everything. I'm sitting in my garage and the phone rings and a preacher from Kentucky says, Brother Mike, yes, this is so-and-so. And he named his name. I know his name. Uh, oh, how you doing? Uh, I loved being with you a few weeks ago. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, Brother Mike, we just got a bill from the hotel where you were, and, uh, they're charging us for all the phone calls you make. If I recall, it was like $35 or $40. 
And uh, Brother Mike, I, we, I, we never agreed to pay for your phone calls in the hotel. We told you we would pay for the hotel room and we'd pay for your food. We did not tell you we would pay for your phone calls. And he's belligerent and attacking. And I'm sitting there and I says, oh, pastor, I, I would never. Well, we just got the bill. And he's, he's, he's in attack mode. I'm in my desk in my garage where my office was. And I'm, I said, brother, wait just a minute. I, I pay, I always pay my bills, brother. I don't, I don't do that. And I pulled open my drawer and there was my American Express. There was my receipt. There was my receipt for what he was jumping all over me for. I said, brother, I've got the receipt. I'm going to make a copy and uh, send it to you. And here's the receipt. I paid for that with American Express, and this is the amount. And I have, and I wanted to go blankety, blank, 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 blank. But he made me mad. Get a receipt for everything. Now, McDonald doesn't like to give you a receipt. They're the only store I know that says, do you want a receipt? Isn't that something? Iced tea, a dollar and eight cents. It's cheap. It's half the price of, you know, others. But they always say, do you want a receipt? I don't know what their, their game is. They got a game, evidently, but a system for it. I always say, yes, I do. And I want to say that today. Always get a receipt for everything. Take a picture of it and keep it in your iPad where you can reference Another simple thing to develop is the, is the app called OneNote. Please write that down, OneNote. It's about 80% accurate through dictation. Drag it anywhere app is about 95% accurate. But OneNote is fabulous for notebooks, sections, and pages. Please write it down. Father, I've told my family today 10 simple things that I think make a big difference. Honor. Honor them for loving your word and loving your wisdom. Father, I pray today for 66 seeds to be planted in the next three days. 66 in memory of the Bible. 66 seeds for me to be able to preach the gospel through TV, radio in Jerusalem and Israel. Pay my staff. Father, I pray for 66 in the next three days. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me show you how to sow a seed into our ministry. Brazil is here, Canada, Congo, Ghana, Jamaica, Japan, Kenya, Mexico, Nigeria, and... Uh, we're only staying with the 12 o'clock live teaching. We will re-air at 5 o'clock. There may be exceptions, but I'm going to one time a day and we'll re-air this. I've been speaking for 51 minutes, 51 minutes. And I will be live with you as the Lord makes it possible every day at 12 o'clock. Larry Redding. Thank you, Larry. Thomas Metton, had seen you in a while, Thomas. Julie Maggard. Julie, you're not limited to one topic. You're not limited to one topic. And uh, your one topic can be your 31 favorite scriptures. That can be your topic there. Pastor Mark Burns, so good to have you here, son. Love you much. And God's given you a word for America. Don't ever forget your thank you system. Pastor Mark, don't forget that. Brenda Holsinger, Apostle Sonia, thank you always for simple, profound, life-changing teaching. Taicha from Japan, I love you, son. Thank you, thank you for walking with me in the gospel. Zachary Shaw says, because of you in your book, Seven Minutes with God, I say this prayer every day. 
It's one of the best books on earth, Seven Minutes with God. It's about 140 pages. It's only $5. I'll show you some. Yay, Nathan Kagan. Thank you, son, for loving on me. Mother's Day. Paul Chadwick, thank you from my heart. We're showing you how to sow into our ministry if you want to screenshot MoneyGram, Western Union, and there's two phone numbers. You can't hardly see them. Can't hardly read them. It's, we'll, we'll do better than that. But the two phone calls, 817-759-BOOK-2665, from 11 to 7, eight hours a day, we just raise it, from 11 o'clock in the morning to 7 every night, Texas time. You can sew through Visa, MasterCard, Discover, American Express, Dr. Brown, yay. Valerie's here, yay, Valerie. Bill, Jackie Pate, Baruch, I'm glad you're here from Mexico. Stacy, Pastor Frederick Crawford, I know that name. You want to write that down? I want to honor him. I feel something in our spirit when I said his name. Pastor Frederick Crawford. Father, he really needs two or three significant seed sores in his life. He needs two or three. He needs two or three people. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise God. You can sow through MoneyGram, Western Union. You can sow through these two phone numbers. Write these phone numbers down. They're too significant. They're very important. And then I'll show you something here if you'd like. Can we show our books again? Are you able to put them on the screen? Oh, as I call them out, write words out of this world. It's book 884. It's the words I use every day for myself. I look through them. You're making the right decisions. God is revealing solutions to you. The answers you're waiting for are very close. God is directing your decisions. Some of the greatest decorations you will ever have. It's $5, five books for 20. $5, five books for 20. The book, The Right Words, Goals, book 811, book 811, 31 Days to Your Money World, book 808. Here they are, 101 Wisdom Keys, book 45, $5. Folks, you can't beat that. And you talk about a thank you system. If you bought several of these, you would always have a thank you system. Always have a thank you system. There's two phone numbers on the screen. We're still planning a three-day conference by faith, October 14th, 15th, and 16th, and hope that you'll take advantage of that. I love you with all of my heart. Take those, pick those numbers down, and I'll let you go. And uh, Miss Sonia, you want to share a video? I want to share. Yes, I was hoping you would thank you. Please do. We're going to show you personal ways to show. Personal ways that some of you would like to bless me personally. And uh, that's precious to me. Fredale, thank you. Thank you. Jackie Smith, thank you. Some of you would like to show personally. And believe it or not, it has made a difference in my world. It's made a big difference in my world. Amen. Thank you from the depths of my heart. Amen. I put great value on every seed. I'm asking God today for five harvests. One being to thrust you in the center of your assignment, wherever you belong. Number two is that God would give you a new discipline for the way you spend your money, that you would negotiate more and not be so loose with your money. Number three is that God would give you three financial 
relationships in your world. Three. Did God bring three people with financial favor towards you? God bless you. From the depths of my heart, I'm thankful for you. These are ways to sow personally if God leads you that way. Past, uh, Miss Sonia, would you? Offer 527, I call this the Prosperity Five. Here they are. 31 Secrets to Career Success. Book 44. Recognize and follow the path of favor. Favor is the golden river from the pit to the palace. There are 20 facts in this book. 20 facts in this book you should know about favor alone. 20 facts. Eight facts about organizing your day and organizing your life in your home. 47 facts about right words, how to talk to other people. 47 facts. This book is a gold mine, it's an encyclopedia. I talk to you, never make an important decision when you're tired. Jeff Bezos of Amazon won't make a decision about his business after three o'clock. Dwight Eisenhower would never make a decision for the government after three o'clock. I give you 10 facts about fatigue and how it affects your decision. Negotiate everything. Negotiation is getting what you want by helping other people get what they need. I'm, this is one of the Prosperity Five books I'm sending to every person who sows a $58 seed. Secrets of the Richest Man Who Ever Lived. 19 years in writing this book. Book 99 on the 31 Master Secrets of Solomon. It took me 19 years to write that. The book that Billy, that Benny Hinn asked me to write for all of his partners. 31 Reasons People Do Not Receive Their Financial Harvest, Book 82. This book alone normally costs $15. The Law of Recognition, out of over a thousand books I've written, this is my favorite book, Book 114, The Law of Recognition. In Brazil, a man met me at the airport, holding this book in his hand. When I got off the plane, he says, this book made me a multi-millionaire. If prosperity matters to you, don't live life without the law of recognition. It's book 114. The fifth book I want you to have, it's my celebration of the $58 seed, 31 days to your money world. The place, these are all my money thoughts, not all of them, but major money thoughts. The place you create pleasure is the place your money world begins. Money is what you receive when you help someone else achieve their goal. Money makes God talk about you, makes God talk for you, and makes God talk to you. The more important people are to you, the more important money will become. Money is a divine reward for solving a problem. Instructions are doors to money. Money is a reaction, not a miracle. Money grows wherever you've decided to plant on it. If your money created a good memory for someone today, you succeeded again. There's no book like this on the earth. It's book 808, 31 days to your money world. I'm sending you all five books and if you don't think wealth is worth the $58 seed to the missions and help the work of God, don't worry about it. The right people will. Father, I sanctify these five books, call them Prosperity Five. I ask you for 58 people in the next 72 hours to call the seed number. I ask you for 58 who will sow a $58 seed for 90 days each month document what will happen. Amen. I need 
I need your phone number if you're going to sow a $58 seed for three months because I'd like to talk to you directly in the next 90 days. I won't call, hold you long. I won't talk more than maybe three to five minutes. But I want to have a direct prayer with you about your $58 cover. I don't call everybody. I don't call many people. But there's something about these 58 people. There's 58 people joining me for the next three months. $58 C each month for three months. That comes every time.